In 2018, is 4 cores 4 threads all you really need for gaming? Well, to answer this question, instead of pairing it up with a high range GTX 1080 Ti or GTX 1080, which I do see a lot of people doing, instead of that, we're going to be pairing it with a mid-range graphics card, the GTX 1060. We're also going to be comparing it against the 8700K in some of the most demanding titles, because in previous videos, you guys tell me that I'm missing out on testing some games that really stress the CPU, games like Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed Origin. So we're going to be testing those, but also we're going to go down a trip down memory lane and see why 4 cores, 4 threads may still be relevant for a few years to come. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. I hope you've all been deal hunting, or if you're not deal hunting, then you're probably buying new PC parts. And right beside me here, I have the i3-8100, which comes in just over $100. However, a lot of the times, people say that 4 cores, 4 threads is coming irrelevant in 2018. And to that, I'd say when it comes to PC building, you always want to balance out the money that you spend on a CPU and also a GPU. This has been a trend that I've always recommended people do when they want to build a new PC and get the best value for money. So today we have the i3-8100 coupled with a GTX 1060 from Galax. And the first game we're going to pull up here is Far Cry 5. When we coupled it with the i3-8100, we score an average FPS of 68 frames. Then we got a minimum of 61. Comparing that against the 8700K, that scored 69 and then a minimum of 59. So we saw there a 1 FPS difference. And on this, I did set the memory to 2666 megahertz on both configurations. Then we go to Project Cars 2. The trend didn't really change a whole lot here as well. On the 8100, we got 96 average FPS, then 85 and 61 for the 1 and 0.1% lows. Move over to the 8700K. It did score 2 FPS higher. However, since this game does not have an inbuilt benchmark, I did have to do a few runs and then average those runs. So there would still be a little bit of variance in this benchmark per se. However, moving over to Assassin's Creed Origin, a very demanding title, especially in 2018. I believe this is a console port, so its optimization for PC is still not the best in today's standards. First up, the 8100 scored 58 average FPS with a 1% low of 49, and then a 0.1% low of 10. Move over to the 8700K, it scored 60, and then 48 and 12 respectively. So there wasn't a whole lot of a difference again in Assassin's Creed Origin. And even though I turned off V-Sync, this game did have an inbuilt cap of 60 FPS. Moving over to the last title that was demanding, we had Witcher 3 scoring 60 average FPS and then 52 and 47. Move over to the 8100, that scored 60 and then 51 and 27. This is in the latest expansion as well. So Witcher 3, Far Cry 5 and Project Cars and even Assassin's Creed Origin didn't see a whole lot of a difference. We did use an SSD in both the builds and as I said before we did overclock the memory to 2666 from 2133 which in my opinion is a very obtainable memory overclock even on the most budget of budget DDR4 memory. So what does this all mean for you as a gamer? Well, when it comes to building a new PC, you generally, as I said before, want to balance out your CPU and your GPU. That is the money you spend on both. So sure, I could put the i3-8100 and couple it with a GTX 1080 Ti, and that would show more of a gap between the two CPUs. However, when it comes to practicality, and if you just want to get into PC gaming, to get on that 8700K, first of all, you have the extra price for the CPU, which is at least an extra $200. Then you've got a custom cooler because the 8700K doesn't come with a cooler, as opposed to the i3-8100, which does. And then you most likely will want to get a better motherboard anyway, so that your CPU doesn't throttle, because we used a budget motherboard in this build, and it's absolutely fine for the i3-8100. However, going back down history lane, it's an interesting trend that we're seeing here. Back in 2005, AMD released their dual core consumer CPU, the Athlon 64X2. Then two years later, Intel released their Core 2 Duo Quad. Namely, the most popular model was the Q6600. And then 10 years later, we still have four cores being released that are still relevant in gaming. So what's with this trend? Why hasn't the market adopted more cores, more threads, especially when it comes to gaming? When we look at the server side, we have definitely seen an increase in the core count and also the prices of CPUs in that respective field. However, when it does come to gaming and especially consumer and CPUs, we haven't seen that same trajectory in the increase in core counts. And so this does come down, I believe, 
to programming the actual games themselves. When I look through posts on the internet about threading for multi-threaded applications, it's actually very difficult. Even in 2018, it is still very difficult to perfectly optimize a game. And hence budgets and also developers at studios don't have to outlay the extra money if they quickly put together games, as the case with PUBG. When that was first released, it was very single core dependent. And sure, as that game did blow up, they did go and re-optimize the game to utilize more cores and threads. But the problem still exists where titles are still constantly being released and they do only utilize one, two, or even four threads as opposed to utilizing eight or 16, especially perfectly. I know in the past that a company called DICE has been renowned for optimizing their games for many cores and many threads. Though DICE is a company that has been around for years and they do have the budget to make their games more polished and optimized, especially for PC. Another example of this is Blizzard, especially Overwatch, a game that was incredibly competitive, yet it was incredibly well optimized for PC. Now you may be thinking this is a problem that will soon be fixed with new APIs like Vulkan and DX12. And the PC title Doom was certainly a poster child for how well optimization can get on the new APIs. But unfortunately, that's where the sort of trend gets bucked. Doom is really the only good example for games on new APIs that run really well. When it comes to a lot of other titles that have DX12 support or even Vulkan support, a lot of people don't use them because the games actually end up running worse. So where does this leave us as tech enthusiasts and gamers or even people like me making recommendations? Well, it leaves us at a point where I am always going to recommend get what's relevant for you at this point in time. We don't know what the future will spell for optimizations, cores and threads. But one thing is, if you're gaming in the now, then you want to enjoy your experience. And that's what an i3-8100, definitely for the money, or a Ryzen 2200G or a Ryzen 3 1200 4 core will give you, coupled with a GTX 1060 or an RX 580, for example, which are mid-range graphics cards. And even better news, if you're into competitive multiplayer titles like CSGO, a CPU like this will at 1080p give you around 300 FPS all the time, every time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comments section below what do you think about these four cores, four threaded CPUs in 2018. I think they're absolutely fine. Though of course, if you do wanna get into streaming, then you may need to spend extra money on something like a six core, 12 threaded Ryzen or Intel CPU. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.